So today our first presenter is going to be Christoph. And like many Linbit developers, Christoph works on a few different Linbit software. Today, Christoph is going to be overviewing one of these. That's Linbit vSAN. If you aren't familiar with it, Linbit vSAN is a software-defined storage solution with a graphical user interface. And this makes it easy for you to create NVMe over fabrics, iSCSI, and NFS data stores. And with that introduction, I will hand over the microphone to Christoph. Yes, hello, everyone. Thank you for the introduction, Michael. Let me just get that screen share up. All right, so uh, I am Christoph. Um, I work for Limbit uh, partially or in one capacity as maintainer and, and lead developer of Limbit vSAN. And um, we will spend the next, uh, let's say, 10 to 15 minutes um, kind of giving a technical overview um, and answering the question, what is Limbit vSAN and uh, how can you maybe use it to your advantage? Uh, this isn't supposed to be like a sales pitch. Uh, it's more of a behind the scenes on, on how the technology behind it actually works um, and what's kind of some some strong use cases for it. Right, so let's uh, get into it with, uh, I guess, the executive summary. So Limbit vSAN is a virtual appliance that exports software-defined storage through highly available iSCSI targets and VMU over fabric, over fabric targets and NFS exports. So that's um, kind of the, the headline, but let's look behind the scenes and, and take a look uh, how we actually do that and what's the, the benefit of this approach. Mm -hmm. uh, I find that a, a, a nice way of visualizing it or explaining that the concept behind it is by taking a look at a, a, a standard um, technology stack that you would use for such an application. So let's look at it from bot, uh, bottom to top. Mm -hmm and start hardware. Obviously you will want some hardware. Uh, it doesn't really matter if it's real hardware or like virtually, uh, virtualized um, hardware, but I will touch on that a little bit later. Um, obviously on top of that hardware, you want some operating system. Uh, of course we will be using Linux. Uh, it, again, it's for, for most deployments, it really doesn't matter what which one you use. Um, there, there are of course differences, but let's roll with a uh, rail-based uh, derivative Let's go with Elma Linux. Um, of course, on top of that, if you want highly available storage, there's no way around the EBD. Um, I, I guess most of the regular audience of this meeting will already be familiar with the EBD, but just a quick summary. Um, basically, the EBD is a, a Linux kernel driver that replicates your data <clears throat> from one node to another node or multiple other nodes. So basically, you can build um, redundant storage clusters that way um, so that your data doesn't get lost. Um, on top of that, um, again, a product that, that probably most viewers will already be familiar with um, is LinStore. And we obviously want that because it makes orchestration of, of DVD resources, among other things, uh, much easier. And we can kind of keep our nodes together and, and uh, go from our SSDs and NVMe drives and, and hard drives to software defined storage where we can actually define our storage pools and, and resources and stuff uh, in software across the whole cluster. Then another component that, that we might use for this um, is the RBD reactor and you may not have heard of that before. So let me briefly explain it. I'll get to that a little bit later too. So the RBD reactor is basically a, a high availability resource manager for the RBD based clusters. And we can use that to um, to export uh, iSCSI targets and stuff. And I will get to that uh, later. Another component that you may have not heard before, um, but which is, is crucial to this whole this whole thing is, is Linster Gateway. And basically this orchestrates um, our Linster resources um, and our DOV director uh, configuration to create um, highly available iSCSI targets, NVMe over fabrics targets and NFS exports. So, um, we now have a, a pretty robust software stack. And again, I'll, I'll go into the details of some of these solutions uh, later, but um, this works very nicely for, for exporting iSCSI storage and, and NVMe storage and NFS storage. Um, and if we combine all of that software, so basically everything except the hardware. Um, oh yeah, and we also have a graphical user interface, um, which I will also show later. So if we combine all of that software, 
into a package. That's what we call a limbit vSAM. And then we wrap an, an, a wizard, a setup wizard, and, and some default configuration around that. So it's easy to use, but that's basically what it is. All right, so let's uh, look at some of the separate parts a little bit more uh, in detail. So I already talked a little bit about DBD Reactor. Uh, it's a, a open source component. You can find it on our GitHub. Um, and and one part of it is it's a highly available or high availability resource manager for DBD based clusters. So basically, what that means is we have redundant storage, we have replicated storage with DBD and with maybe with Linstore. And what we want is wherever that storage is available, just run some service. And this may ring a bell if you're familiar with uh, Pacemaker, which is a, a pretty um, important piece of software and a pretty widely used one um, for doing exactly that kind of thing. So running highly available services on top of replicated storage. But for at least for these use cases, um, we find it to be a lot simpler. And you will note the asterisk there. There are a few limitations to that. Of course, the EVD reactor has way less features. So for example, with Pacemaker, Pacemaker, you can define all sorts of rules and co-location constraints and, and stuff like that. And it gets complicated very quickly. The EVD reactor has almost none of that. Um, but again, I think, or we think that this is an advantage for the kind of use cases that we have in mind for Limbit vSAM. So just a few words, this isn't a, a DB reactor deep dive, but it's just a few words on how it technically works. So basically it reacts to um, changes in cluster state as the name already implies. Um, so one, ev uh, every time something changes within the RPD, we can react to that and um, kind of uh, execute some action. So the question we are asking at all times is, is there some DRBD resource that can be promoted? And if so, then promote it. So make it writable um, and start some service there. And that service may be a system D unit. That's kind of the, the simplest case, or it may be a, a resource agent, which is the ready-made piece of software that comes with a pacemaker that starts, for example, iSCSI targets um, and stuff like that. Right, then another piece of software that you may not be familiar with is Linster Gateway. It's also open source and also available via our GitHub. Um, so this is kind of the, the whole heart of Limbit vSAN. Um, it's what makes it, it run. Uh, what this does is it uses um, DRBD storage orchestrated via Linster for replicating your data. And it uses DRBD reactor for starting highly available services. And these highly available services are either an iSCSI target or NVMe over Fabrics target or NFS export. So that's kind of the, the final link of what we need to go from our replicated storage to actual iSCSI or NVMe or NFS exported storage. And the nice thing about that is it uses the standard quote unquote resource agents that also come with Pacemaker. So if you've built a, a highly available NFS um, server before with uh, using Pacemaker, this like the, the the actual service part is um, very likely to be exactly the same code. So it's kind of a tried and true, only in a different um, package, so to speak, that works, we find works better with uh, DRBD and that whole like, ecosystem. Right, so then uh, we also have, uh, we don't only want to make, make it work, we, only, we also want to make it easy to, to administer and to, um, to manage. So we have uh, another proprietary, or we have a proprietary product um, from Limbit, which is a Linstar GUI. And this exists for, for Linstar in general, but it also has a special mode, especially for Limbit vSAN. Um, and I will show this off in a live, live demo later, but um, we can see here that we can um, like define iSCSI, NVMe, and, and NFS exports. Um, nicely from the GUI and we can also do some some administration tasks like updating the software on the nodes and um, stuff like that. And kind of monitoring how big our storage pool is and, and all that sort of thing. Right, so that brings us back to, to Limbit vSAN, um, which is um, the sum of all that. Um, so and another like, glimpse behind the theme scenes, I guess, is um, 
specifically specifically we use uh, stst for our iSCSI target just because we found that that works pretty well with um, a lot of hypervisors and we just use the standard nvme over fabrics target that comes with linux and the standard nfs server that comes with linux um, yeah and in addition to all that software what uh, we also provide is, is a setup wizard so that the um, idea, I guess, is you just bring the hardware and click through a, a couple of setup points and, and it's all done. Um, yeah, it also configures some some nice defaults for you that we have found to work very well with uh, DRBD-based setups. So one of those is, is Quorum. Um, and I bring that up because a, a limitation of Limbit Visa, I guess, is that you need at least three nodes for it to work. But um, an important point here is that only two of those nodes actually need storage. And one of them can be very slim, so to speak, and doesn't need any storage, it just needs to be connected to the network. But anyway, if you have been dealing with uh, or have been uh, using DRBD for a long time, you may have come across a split brain scenario, which is when uh, in a two node cluster, when the two nodes um, disagree on which data set is actually the correct one. and Quorum, in a nutshell, um, is kind of designed to to work around that and to to prevent that from happening. So that's just one example of the the protections, I guess, that Limbit vSAN um, configures automatically for you, and so that you have one uh, less thing to worry about. Right. Uh, I already mentioned the, the graphical user interface, but that also applies to the to the setup. So um, it's just clicking through a setup wizard, a web based. A wizard and then you get to the web-based Insta GUI where you can administer everything from from the uh, from your browser. Yeah, and then just another technical detail, I guess, is we use Elma Linux as the base OS, um, and we we could just modify the ISO installer, the regular ISO installer. So if you've ever installed a rel-based operating system or like a rel derivative like Elma Linux or like CentOS. It's pretty much that process. So it should be familiar to a lot of people. Um, and then just some some wizard uh, questions on top of that. So it's really pretty simple to install. Right, so let's look at a, a few different scenarios where uh, or a few different setups, how you could deploy a Limbit VSAN or common ones. Um, so one of those is just using bare metal hardware. So we have three hardware nodes here at the bottom. Um, and we just install Limbit vSAN directly on the hardware, like insert a USB drive and just install it. And that just works because it's um, it's based on, on a regular Linux distribution. And then those three nodes, hardware nodes will communicate with each, other, with each other. And as one, they will export one highly available storage target. So be it iSCSI or NVMe or Fabrics or NFS um, or all three uh, actually. So they just export that and then you have a hypervisor or actually multiple hypervisors, doesn't really matter how many you have and they can all consume that that storage. Um, for example, with VMware, you could um, have a VMFS on top of that and then um, like drive three hypervisors with that or something like that. And that's often used by people that already have an existing virtualization. Um, environment and just want to offload some of the storage work to two additional nodes. And that's very helpful in that case. And another another option is using hyperconverged a hyperconverged architecture where you also have three uh, hardware nodes, but you run the hypervisor on these nodes. So for example, let's say you have three, I don't know, Hyper-V um, hypervisors on there. Um, on each of these hypervisors, you create a virtual machine. And in that virtual machine, you install all of that software stack that we talked about before, Limbit vSAN. Um, and it works just as well, because as I said, it's just a regular Elma Linux installer. So it works in the virtual machine as well. And again, they export one iSCSI target, one NFM over Fabrics target, one uh, NFS uh, export, whatever we want to export here, we can. And then we feed that back to the hypervisor. So the hypervisor itself consumes the exported um, storage. Um, and that's very nice if you're, for example, if you're planning a, a virtualization environment from the start and you have the ability to kind of allocate 
some some compute power and some some RAM and some um, disk space specifically for Limbit vSAN um, that can work out uh, pretty nicely. Which way you use depends on your on your specific situation, but that's just two of the um, of the possibilities there. Right, so just some uh, a brief overview of the use cases we had in mind for for that for the whole solution. Um, so what we had in mind is is small and medium sized virtualization environments. So you can see on the right here is just some examples, um, not an endorsement or or, or anything, but just a, a random pick of of some players in the industry. Basically anything that consumes iSCSI, consumes NVMU or Fabrics, and consumes uh, NFS is is viable here. But I also want to touch on some points where maybe Limbit Vizen doesn't make as much sense. So um, if you have, like, for example, take Open Nebula, where we have a Linster driver, it wouldn't make much sense to use iSCSI via Limbit Vizen there. Um, it would be better to, to use the native uh, Open Nebula driver. But if we don't have a Linster driver, Limbit Vizen can be a, a good fit. Um, and it's also a good fit if we have some specific storage protocol requirements. So let's say we have a bunch of Linux nodes and for some reason, some software expects us to uh, expose an iSCSI target, then Limbit vSAN is, is nice for that and we can use it as kind of an adapter from, from DRBD storage to, to iSCSI. Okay, um, I hope that out outlines it a little bit. Um, let me very quickly um, demonstrate some of that. Um, just to show you kind of the look and feel and uh, what it what it looks like. So I have a, a demo setup here, just a three node cluster um, of of Limbit vSAN nodes, and that's this is what the um, what the GUI looks like. Um, we have some storage here; it's just two gigabytes because this is just a demo deployment, um, and it's really thin and. I skipped the setup because it's it, it takes a few minutes and it's pretty boring to look at, uh, frankly. But um, it, once it's finished, um, it it looks like this. Um, and then we see here that we we can browse through our iSCSI targets, NVMe targets, and NFS exports. Of course, we we don't have anything yet, so let's maybe create a, an NVMe over Fabrics target. And I have a resource group created here. It's on the SSDs and it has two replicas. Um, we have to choose a service IP where the target will be reachable. So that's just some IP on the network that's not used already. Okay. Let's call it demo one. Right, of course I already did that before. Yeah, anyway, um, so we could then look at the, the targets here. It just shows how much space there is available in the um, in the target. And we can also, like I said, update our nodes um, and yeah, look at look at Linster error reports and, and stuff like that. Yeah, so I hope that's uh, Kind of gives you an overview of how the, the whole solution works um, and i'll give it back to michael thank you 